Welcome to the 8020 show presented by your host, Jason Yee. Welcome to the 8020 show presented by your host, Jason Yee. <coughs> Welcome. <coughs> ooh, ooh. Welcome to the train, the 8020 show. Um, I'm Jason Yee. <laughs> Sorry, I was not prepared there. This is Train 2.0, and I'd like to introduce you to the show. So I'd like to tell you a bit about why I made this show for you. So I'm here to teach you the biomechanics and mental habits of hockey wizards 10 times faster than anywhere else. And I do this by focusing on the vital 20% of coaching that will give you 80% of your results, something that hockey wizards have mastered. And the problem is that most drone coaches are stuck teaching you the 80% that give you 20% of your results. And the 80-20 show is changing that. So as you're watching, you might notice that we hone in on that 80-20 together. And as you, as you notice that, uh, you might want to check out the 80-20 or where the 80-20 roadmap is located in the 80-20 club membership area. And I'll give you some special information about that uh, at the end of the show. So that is the uh, intro. And today we're going to talk about Alex Ovechkin's biomechanics. Um, and before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about the system that we're using here. Because um, I'll be totally honest with you, my entire um, my entire hockey career, I did not have a good shot. Right? I had like an okay shot um, after thousands of hours of practicing technique that was not good and my own personal situation was that I remember I did a golf lesson one time and I did this golf lesson with this fantastic instructor and he took me like step by step by step through the exact biomechanics on how to adjust my swing and I was slicing the ball this way and curving it that way and missing the ball and he'd give me these little tweaks of my biomechanics tweak 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 and all of a sudden bang I was hitting the ball great now if you ask me to do that um, you know, uh, right now, this was when I was like 13, right? Th this was happening. And I came home that day and I said to my, or my parents said to me, how was your golf lesson? And I said, it was fantastic. It was, it was absolutely amazing. I was hitting the ball great. And, and, uh, he showed me exactly what to do. And, you know, he had video and all this stuff. And he and my parents were like, well, you know, we really wish there was something like that for hockey. And we looked around and we, there was like, you know, shooting mechanics and, and um, you know, different instructors. And and uh, I guess, you know, part of the problem was we lived on an island, literally Vancouver Island in Victoria or Vancouver Island in British Columbia. So there wasn't really like anyone to, to t teach you how to shoot. And then when I kind of finally got some instruction, uh, it turned out to be the wrong advice. And as a result, um, I was kind of just working really hard, practicing the wrong stuff, stuff that wasn't working. And I see this a lot with a lot of players. Like they're literally diligently practicing um, what works. And because a coach is dogmatic and has an ego and doesn't want to say I'm wrong or I'm potentially wrong, um, the kid is, you know, the kid is, you know, shooting with the wrong mechanics, right? The player is shooting with the wrong mechanics and the coach is going, well, you're just not doing it well enough, right? My mechanics work. Uh, you know, I know how to teach it. You're just not doing it well enough. So what's missing is a system to, to very quickly test 
those mechanics. And Train 2.0, 80-20 Club, is that system. And that system looks like this. Because, um, you know, I just had it today. I send out, I, I created a video talking about dangle by design. And I used the word, hey, I, I, I just kind of off the cuff was like, hey, you need to dial in the magic mechanics for stick handling and skating beforehand. And one of my followers set, sends me a message and says, hey, what do you mean by dial in? You know, you're not being very specific. You're kind of ambiguous. I was like, yeah, I guess I was, right? And so in adjusting my own language, right, now someone can be more clear to understand what is what. Now, why this long preamble? Because um, first off, I want to get you guys on to get your feedback so you guys can see it. And to also explain what's going to happen here. You know, what is going to happen here is we're going to go over Ovechkin's shooting biomechanics. And we're going to go over them in detail. And re remember that I have training as a kinesiologist. Uh, I've studied thousands of hours of video. Um, I've, I've taught players lots of complicated movements. And I haven't quite yet mastered the shot. So what we're doing here, I haven't mastered teaching the shot either. So what we're doing here is I'm going to show you what I think is going on. I'm going to show you what I think the cues are. You guys are going to go and practice those cues. And if there's one that really, really works for me or for you, you're going to let me know. And if there's one that sucks, you're going to let me know too. We're testing this really, really fast. And we're going to reach hundreds of people, maybe even thousands of people very, 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 very qu quickly, right? No coach can do this uh, unless they kind of one by one by one by one um, test this uh, approach. So it just doesn't physically work out. With the internet, we're able to go bang, 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 bang. Um, all at once, hundreds of you are able to look at the video, practice the cues, and see what, see what makes a difference. See if I'm right or I'm wrong, and I don't care what it is so long as you get better. That's the only, that's the only catch here. So I put on my special striped shirt today for this breakdown, and we're going to get into that now. So what I'd like is for you guys to, first off, tell me the quality of the video. Tell me the quality of the, um, of the cues I'm using, if they're clear, if they're not clear, and then when this is all said and done and you practice Ovechkin's biomechanics yourself and let me know how it works. If there's any cue that works really well um, or doesn't, you let me know and guess where that goes. It goes in the 8020 Club membership area uh, for you members um, and what we'll do is we'll cr be creating the source code drills uh, for this shot. This will be like a level two. So you'll just simply, once we know the roadmap, there's going to be drills laid out for you to automatically get it. So if you want to learn it, the, those biomechanics, you can literally learn it 10 times faster. So let's begin. Oops. All right. Here is my wonderful Ovechkin lab. Let's make sure that we're, you guys are seeing it. Yes, okay. Uh, so here it is. Here are the things I think I'm seeing. I'm going to check back in to see what you guys think you're seeing. So when we talk about 80-20, a lot of times people focus on irrelevant things, right? Um, or they don't understand the look-feel paradox. So they might say something like, hey, he transfers his weight. But if I give the cue transfer your weight, that might be missing a whole bunch of other things. As such, the transfer your weight cue might be that 80% that's useless, not the 20% that's vital. And in my experience, that's been the case, is that transfer your weight is, a, is, a, is, a, is not an 80-20 cue. It is a um, cue that doesn't work. So let's watch this first goal. So we'll just watch it. Okay, and we all love this. We all think it's just the greatest. Um, let me know the quality of the feed as well. If it's laggy or not, I can adjust things. So that's the, or if it's too small for you guys. Okay, so here's what I think I'm seeing. So I'm going to just um, check comments and see if... Uh, Ross, that's awesome. Thank you. I'm glad that that's worked out for you. 
Um, can you email me or text me? My email's in the description. Um, I'm curious. Um, I'm curious what what made it really clear for you? Um, shooting with the top hand, what cues, what words did I use that did that? That's um, important, right? Um, feed is good. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's um, let's dive in here a bit more. So here are the things I think I'm seeing. Okay, you hear here are the cues that I think are not 80/20 that I hear all the time. Transfer your weight um, and keep your top hand out. I don't. I think that's part of the look feel paradox where that's something that looks like it's happening, but it's not actually the feel of the shooter. And so I think those are not 80/20 cues. Here are the cues that I've come up with. The first cue, the first thing you're going to see is this. He's, you can you can almost always see his right foot, so his back foot, is is almost always cocked like this, right? So he cocks it again, and then he cocks it again, right? And the reason for that is because I think he's really getting a lot of pushing off of this. Um, heel edge here inside heel edge <clears throat> so that's the very first thing I think is happening um, and so just so you guys know I'm saying I think this is happening I've experimented this with with myself so I, I'm I'm now curious to see how my cue translates to what you guys are doing um, so that's the first thing is that we're on this inside edge of this right foot the second thing is I think the wind up is irrelevant because so that's not 80 20. Um, Ovechkin does it a little differently than other players that then say Stamkos then say Patrick Kane then say um, anyone else right everyone seems to do the wind up a little differently I think that's not 80 20 the like the, the specifics of the wind up but I'm going to tell you something that I think isn't and that is where's the right angle for this I might do this one. So the thing that I think is not 80, that is 80, 20 is this angle. Okay, so I'll, I'll draw that a bit bigger for you, is the angle of his body, okay? And I'll tell you why in a second. So the first, the things we're on right now is inside foot, angle of his upper body, and then the next thing is his top hand. Okay, and everyone says top hand should be out, but I'll show you in a second that his top hand isn't actually out. And pretty much no players is when they're taking a slap shot. What I do think is um, the shot doctor from Boston, now I don't know his name, so I, that's bad of me, um, he talks about tickle the nipple. And you got to imagine that this this hand kind of comes from just in front of you, tightly around like this, the body. And the main way to get the power is by imagining that a rope is pulling this elbow and shoulder back behind you really hard. Watch how hard these two things turn. Boom. Okay. And so the harder that this snaps back, Right, and you can actually see the whip here, right, of his not his stick, but of the of his elbow and shoulder, right, as he hits, you can see that elbow was kind of a little more forward and cocks back. And you can see that whip of his hand and his elbow at the very end. Okay. Um, and then the last thing is that I'm seeing is that remember I said he's pushing off this heel that's where he pushes from but then when he actually goes to make contact what happens is this these hips drop they don't necessarily twist this hip actually this right hip actually drops down and that's what causes that toe to to be the only thing on the ice and the heel to come up he's not pushing from the toe i think again the pushing from a toe thing is a um is not a 20 but but driving off that heel and then and then now dropping that hip um, is what causes that heel to come up, is that, that rotation through the hip. So all in all, 
I'm thinking that there's four things, right? The first one being, and we'll watch it on, on all these different ones here, right? The first one being the importance of this foot, right? So we'll see here of his back foot inside edge. I think that's the first most important thing. The second most important thing is his angle, right? So you can see right here how he leans forward. You can see right here how he's leaning forward. You can see right, these are all the same things, right? He's leaning forward and right there, he's leaning forward. That's the second thing. Now, remember he's just pushed from his heel. The next thing I think is that this right hip from his back foot drops, that drops, that drops, this drops. So we'll just play all those and that hip drops, right? This hip right here drops, this hip right here drops, this hip right here drops. Okay, and then the, the last part is his arms, right? So his top hand, like I said, doesn't actually seem to go away from his body. People say it does, but what ends up happening here is that whip effect. You can see just how his elbow and back shoulder pull that stick back. Okay, so we'll watch again here. Maybe this is that one's too small for you guys. Boom, there. You can see just how much he's pulling back with that top hand, and pulling it in. Same thing here. So I am curious now, so I'm going to go back to the other feed. So those are the four things I'm seeing that I think are 80 20. Okay. Things like the wind up, things like, you know, um, a weight shift, things like hands out are not 80 20 in my eyes. So, what I'd love for the Train 2.0 Nation, the 80 20 show watchers to do is to test out these four cues, see which ones of them work best. And I'm interested in your feedback right now. Um, so, I'm checking back here on the feedback. Um, okay, so it seems like Ovechkin is using his lower hand a lot when he's shooting. Um, Let's look into that. Um, Kane was coached by Belfry, who teaches a more arched stick path, allowing for a longer potential. Hitting a sweet spot, if that makes sense. Uh, no, I don't know what you mean there. Um, could you let me know what you, what what you mean? Uh, I'm gonna bring up a um, a cane slow motion video, cane one time or cane slap shot, slow motion <clears throat> for everyone to see, and then we can kind of see what uh, you mean by that. Okay, so I'm going to bring that up here. And again, you can always see what I've been watching recently. And that would be Slap Shots um, and Star Wars. Okay, let's, let's watch this here. Uh, I'm going to see what you mean by the arced, the arched thing. See if this is... So like uh, the differences, right, between, and this is why I say I don't, I don't think the, the arm swing is a very important, it's not 80-20 because Kane's doing something different um, than Ovechkin. So my guess is that it's not 80-20. Okay. Here are the, the kind of things we're going to see. We're going to see that back foot inside edge is planted so he can drive off of it, right? He has that forward body angle. Okay, that's the next thing. The second thing is his hands are tight to his body, 
and his hands are not out. Um, just a second. Oops. Um, <clears throat> his hands are not out. Right, and now you can see that elbow making that journey around his body and snapping back. Right, so it's his elbow and and top shoulder that are snapping back. And you can just see how much twist he got and how lean forward he is and how much this elbow snaps back. Now let's back this up. Now, one might say that Kane is using his bottom hand, Ovechkin is using his bottom hand. I want to show you the physics of this, right? The bottom hand has to do a job, right? And the job is simply to, it's kind of like the, the hammer that you drop, right? But it, if you focus on that too much, I think it is going to throw you off because the 80-20 or something that's more 80-20, maybe 90-10, is the top hand mechanics. The bottom hand is going to happen whether you want it to or not. So if we were to focus on the bottom hand mechanics and we were to say this is all a push, then watch where this would end, right there. That's his, that's his full extension with his hand. But watch how much further he can keep rotating with his backhand. Right, and we'll see that with o Ovechkin too. Um, but Ross, I'm going to check out what, a little bit more about what you mean. Um, see if I can get to your questions there. Um, uh, so... <clears throat> Uh, so Ross, can you let me know what in that video that I just um, went over with Kane? Can you let me know what part of that is kind of that 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 arch hand, uh, or so the arched uh, stick path? Can you let me know what you mean by that? Uh, so I'm going to go back to this, and when it comes to that bottom hand, right? Right, right here is the, is, is the maximum amount that your bottom hand can do, right? From, from here to there, right? Now, everything else happens with the rotation of that top hand, the top elbow, the top shoulder, right? So you can see how that extra snap is coming from that top hand, top elbow, top shoulder. And you know we can see it here to where's the best view? That's probably this one here. Right. So yes, the bottom hand can go to there, but everything else has to happen from that top hand, top elbow snapping back, punching back, um, and that has to work in concert with the legs. Um, Maybe let's see if we can bring up a uh, cane, cane one-timer. Uh, yeah, so it, yeah, it is like a chain effect, right? The whole, um, the whole and uh, the the whole the whole thing is is a, an entire is a whip effect, right? Uh, I talk about this in the membership area, the eighty twenty club membership area. I talk about the whip effect of that of that top hand. So um, we got we got to remember that a a shot is a a uh, um, is a projectile, right? And our body, the best way to create a projectile is efficiently is to spin and twist, right? So I could just, um, and, and, and then the best way to generate energy from that is to literally use a, a whip effect, right? So um, sequencing the right movements in the right order to create that whip effect 
including this augmented thing we call a hockey stick, right? Which is kind of like a mechanic, makes you a mechanical cyborg, so to speak. Using the right sequences in the right order is going to create that whip effect. That is kind of the secret um, formula uh, of these of these shooters. So so when Aaron's talking about snapping a towel or creating a whip effect with the elbow elbow snapping it back, that's creating that whip effect. So he's very right. Um, <clears throat> Okay. So what Ross is saying is that teaching a player to have a, a longer, a more arch stick path so that there's more time on the ice uh, for the stick. So let's look into, let's, let's watch Ovechkin's mechanics here and let's see if we can pick that out. Um, <clears throat> I mean, what are you guys seeing here? I'm seeing... I mean, here's what I'm seeing. I, I, I'm thinking that if you are, if you are getting the flex on the stick enough, right, with that, again, with the top hand creating the whip, What's going to happen is you're going to that that stick is going to be um, on the ice and, and it's too blurry here. Let's see if we can watch here. The guy shoots too hard, which is why we all want to master his mechanics. But if that stick is flexed, you can see where he's contacting the ice, which is kind of like around here. It looks like. And the puck seems to be, so this seems to be where he's contacting the ice, and the puck seems to be here, right? And he can probably hit the puck kind of in a range from here to here because his stick is probably flexed and on the ice um, the whole time. So um, let's see if that kind of pans out. So let me know your guys' thoughts on that. And so like a good a, another good way to think of the difference between the top hand versus the bottom hand is that when you're using the top hand, you're creating that whip effect, you're creating that projectile, right? And you're rotating around this axis. If you're using that bottom hand, it now becomes a push and now your energy goes this way. And if you try to push a puck, just imagine like a 5-year-old trying to push a puck into the net, right? That, that player doesn't have mastery of rotation mechanics to create the whip effect, to create the projectile, which is the puck. So that's where the bottom hand is limited in just working synergistically with that top hand. The top hand is responsible for the rotation. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, he's using his bottom hand, but it's a synergistic thing, not uh, bottom hand dominance. So let's take a look here. Do I think the whip effect of the wrist in the wrist shot can be compared to the wrist at impact of the golf swing? Um, oh, sorry, I, I missed Ross's thing. Okay, so let's... um. Um, okay, so, mm -hmm. Ross, if you, would you be able to find me that, uh, that link and, and send it here if, if, if that's something that's easy to do? Um, would it be Tavares? Because Tavares kind of has a different look about him when he shoots. Uh, do I think the whip effect of the wrist in a wrist shot can be prepared to the release of the wrist at the impact of a golf swing? Now, I don't, I'm not an expert on the golf swing. I don't know the golf swing well enough to, to answer that. 
But to answer on in terms of the, the, the movement principles, a, a golf swing and a, and, a, and a wrist shot or any sort of shot is very much like a, uh, they're, they're the same movement. They have the same movement principles, which is that you create a whip effect from kind of one segment of the body moving, then the next, then the next, then the next, then the next, and one should connect to the other in flow and sequence, and it should build off each each movement. So um, the when it comes to the shot, you know, I see that as uh, um, it being similar. And kind of the one of the main things I see is kind of one of the questions I asked myself was on the with the golf swing. Why is it that on the back swing this elbow tucks in and um, and on the way back, as you come as you come through, the other elbow tucks back in, and it's kind of to create that chain whip um, effect thing. So again, I can't really speak to the wrist mechanics; I don't know it well enough. But if we do talk a little bit about wrist mechanics, you'll notice that the the, the grip of a of a golf swing, the proper grip of a golf swing, as I understand it, is similar to the um, the NHL grip code. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna see if I can see this like Daryl Belfry coaching one timer. See if I can discover that. Okay, so what I'm watching here right now is um, Austin Matthews shooting with, it looks like Belfry. And Ross, let me know if this is what you mean, where he's kind of got that, um, that backhand, like his, his left hand is more straight and it looks like, what do we see here? We see NHL code grip. We see that elbow in the right position to create that leverage and whip. And watch just how much um, he's pulling with that top hand, that top elbow. Um, and I sort of, I'm seeing that arc a bit there that you're talking about. Um, if if that's what you're talking about, right? The the it seems a little bit lower to the ice. So that might be a cue to try out as well. Um, let me know if that's what you were meaning. Yeah, so I think like questions are like 30 seconds delayed-ish, so I'll just wait for them a bit here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, okay, so um, yeah, it's more like, so Ross is saying that's a little bit more like the typical Belfry one-timer. Um, so let's experiment. Let's see. Um, I'm interested in your feedback. Um, personally, I will go test that out myself as well. And I'm interested to see what you guys, what, which of those cues make sense, if any of them make sense. Um, cause you know, Ross... Uh, Ross mentioned how you know, like the the top hand shooting mechanics was a, a very very good um, uh, cue for him, and so that's just what I'm getting all day. As I put out these different things, and I'm getting different information back, and then adjusting and adjusting and adjusting, and um, 
I'm in coaching players daily. Uh, I'm coaching myself. And, and this has never been able to happen so fast before. Uh, without the use of the internet, without the use of the um, uh, video that everyone can see. So it's really cool that we're all part of this. So thank you for for watching. And like I said, the, the mission here is to is to come up with the cues that make sense, that feel right, so that anyone can learn it. Um, so thanks for watching. And this okay, uh, in baseball when I swing, I found myself to have a cocked back foot. Where should you receive the puck relative to your back? Foot. So hockey is different than than base. Now, interestingly, right? Some of the it, like here's an interesting thing when it comes to the shot is Ovechkin apparently his first time golfing ever got a hole in one. What are the odds of that happening? Uh, higher than you'd think, I'd say. Um, because Ovechkin is a rotation expert. He is a he is a uh, projectile expert. Okay, I'm gonna check this out in a second Steven Stamkos played baseball right and was a very good baseball player um, you know these guys have phenomenal shots so is it any any mystery you, you know uh, Jamie Ben was a almost pro baseball player I think Ryan McDonough uh, you know I think he was a three sport athlete um, so all these guys have literally expert rotation mechanics so is that is that any coincidence no but the some of the principles are a little bit different um in hockey because you're going to be pushing with your heel a bit so i i think that having that heel down to push as in what i was showing with um ovechkin shot i think that might be one of the hints. That's why I say test it out. Let me know. I'm I'm, I'm curious to know um, what's going on there. Okay, I'm gonna check out this pro plate bankers August 2014. Four minutes and 15 seconds in. Okay, let's take a look here. Four minutes and tw everyone can see me. I think yeah. Is this the right one, Ross? I'm trying to okay so I'm here's what I'm struggling to um, understand um, that's a great video I've got it okay so here tell me what makes sense here I should have had the whiteboard ready today I think what he's saying is if this is the overhead view just a second of a player you have your release or your stick path in an arc versus straight ahead like this. This is what I'm thinking. So when you mean arc, I think that's what he means versus this. I'm not sure what he's saying is, I'm not sure which one he's saying is better. I don't personally know. I haven't had a chance to test that yet. So again, I put this out to you guys who are watching, test this out let me know and um, I'll test it out as well. And then we'll adjust and see um, exactly. So you, so Ross, you're saying that um, you think that it looks loopy, so you think Belfry's encouraging the arced um, swing. I'll, let's take a look again. Huh. 
Yeah, interesting. Um, yeah, so let's test that out. Test that out. Let me know what you guys come up with there. Um, because I'm interested too. And that's the beauty of this uh, with technology here is that we can um, we can do this we can test it quickly and um, I can get ton we can get tons of data points uh, much faster and and learn those mechanics and and you know one of the things I've been thinking about too is like um, think of all the hockey players out there um, who are not doing this right the 99% and it's closer to like 99.9% .9 of, of players who are not doing this because you're here because you're watching this if you've got this far then my presumption is that you're willing to put in the work so just by simply testing it the the the, the few of us which is really if it's if it's 0.1% or 0.01% that's still like several thousand across the world um, or several hundred, I guess. Um, we're we're all uh, we're all contributing to this together. So it's not like all ninety nine percent of all, all the players are going to get uh, this type of coaching. Um, just those who are willing to put in the work and effort and and um, and, and hone in on this together. So. Um, I'm going to leave that with you guys. I really enjoyed this chat. Uh, for those who are watching who are not live right now, let me know what you guys thought of the of the of the cues. So we have kind of five cues. Okay, we have the push with your back foot inside edge on the heel. That's my thought. Next is drop the hip as you are twisting. Um, to Oh, uh, the other one is before that is lean forward with your body and I think that has to do with getting the flex on the stick and then four is snap your elbow and shoulder back with that whip effect precursor to that is having the NHL grip code correct and then the fifth one that's been brought forth is the arced shooting path and that might make it easier to get the one timer off um, so those of you who are watching right now check that out test it out let me know what feedback you come up with and then we continue to iterate and and, uh, and go from there and then we'll continue this conversation and the drills the step-by-step -step drills once we've dialed in on the cues will be placed in the membership area and so that a player who wants to learn it can learn it at least 10 times faster so um, one of the things I want to offer to you guys who are already in the 80-20 club um, who are who are thinking are, of joining is I'm, I, I, I've been thinking about a good guarantee I can give and my guarantee is this 30 days you're gonna see results in 30 days or less I'm sure people are seeing it a lot quicker than, than 30 days but you're gonna see see it in 30 days or less or you get your first month free. You get your, uh, I'll refund you your money. Um, and so you got, so now you have seven days to test it out for free just to see if you like my voice and the quality of the videos, right? Just to test that out. Your credit card will not be charged. You have seven days to test it out for free. Then you've got another 30 days to see if you get any results. And if you don't get any results, I'll give you your money back. And my promise, um, you know, to you is that you will get those results. Okay. It, it, it's that simple. So if you're watching and you're thinking of joining, like I said, once we've honed in on these, on the right cues and I practice the right drills and, and coach them to enough people, that's all going to go in the membership area. So you can do your best to, to figure it out yourself. I've given you my own ideas on how to do that. And or if you'd like the shortcut, if you'd like to benefit from the crowd wisdom from this augmented brain that is the internet and technology, that'll be in the membership area. And like I said, you got 30 days, 37 days even to, to see if you get any results. That's my guarantee to you. So I wanted to tell you guys about that today. And if you're already a member, guarantee applies to you as well. 
uh, if you're not seeing the results within 30 days, uh, giving you your money back. That's how strongly I believe in in the in in this system. So, guys, thank you for watching. Here's the outro video, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching and listening to the 8020 show hosted by Jason Yee. Be sure to check out more at train2.0.com.